Happy 4th of July, everybody. This is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about Captain America, the first Avenger. I still can't believe this came out nearly a decade ago, back in 2011. It stars that of Chris Evans, Haley Atwell, Hugo Weaving, Sebastian Stan. And like, you know, this movie is so good. I have such fond memories of this. Like, I remember when I watched it, because, like, you know, I was a little worried, and I was a little worried about the title, it being called, you know, the first, like, Avenger. I really didn't like that. Then when they said they were going to cast Chris Evans, I'm all like, why? He's Johnny Storm. He's the Human Torch. Like, you know, the Fantastic Four might show up, and then like, is he going to play, like, two characters and stuff? But, of course, that was back then when people didn't know that Fox Marvel movies and the Disney Marvel movies are completely separate. And, you know, I like Chris Evans as an actor, but, like, you know, I wanted him to play, like, Johnny Storm. But then, my God, he amazed everybody when he played Captain America. He is truly Captain America. Like, when I think of Captain America, I think of him now, you know? And... It amazes me how different these Marvel movies were back in phase one. This movie has little to no humor. Thank God, because I'm so sick and tired of the humor in Disney uh, Marvel movies. They have gone crazy with the humor. And the reason for that is because like John Favreau, the one who started this all, he infused a little humor. But it was Josh Whedon's crazy behind who just infused more and more and more humor to where Marvel movies rely on them way too much. Taika Waititi, he broke the mold in terms of like Marvel Disney baby humor, as I like to call it. And it has really ruined like the, you know, the franchise and stuff. Because now everybody's reliant on that crazed humor and stuff. And they're trying to dial it back now. I've noticed that with Secret Invasion. But it's taken way too long for them to dial back that humor. Now, I forgot the person who directs this movie, but this is the only Marvel movie and the only Captain America movie he ever directed. Ever since then, he's never returned. Instead, every other Captain America movie was directed by the Russo brothers. And... The thing I love the most about this movie is how grounded it is, how realistic it feels. I love period pieces and stuff. And so since this is a period piece, this was just like amazing, you know? Like if, yeah, sure, at first it starts off in like, you know, the modern day, but then it goes back into like the past. And, you know, you really feel like this is set back in the olden days, you know, back during World War II. And it is kind of weird seeing Captain America back in that time era because I'm mostly used to seeing him in the modern day. But, like, everything about this movie, in my opinion, is just near-death perfect. The action, the choreography, the cinematography. I love the golden tint that they filter that they have on some scenes. The acting is great. The writing is great. There could have been more action. That is my only downfall. Like when he finally puts on the real suit, it's like a montage of him doing like action sequences. I don't want a montage. I want real action and stuff. That's something that the Russos brought out with their movies when they um, got a hold of Captain America. Sadly, when Josh Whedon took a hold of Captain America, he just made him into like a doofus. I get it. He's a man displaced out of time. But... Like, he still made him noble in some sense, but made him kind of childish in the other. And that's just because Josh Whedon is just an idiot. And thankfully, he got canceled and stuff. And, you know, J Josh Whedon really hurt Captain America. But thank God the Russos brought him back and turned him back into the man, the soldier that everybody knew and loved. And that's the thing about Steve Rogers, Captain America. He really, truly is a soldier. He is a man who 
Like when you watch this movie, before he even becomes Captain America, and he's just Steve Rogers, you know, he's that scrawny, dorky looking guy. But his voice sound always sounded weird. When he was super skinny and had his deep voice, that just never felt right. Now, some of the CGI is off in this. Like, you know, when he's skinny. Like that, that, that scene in the car, it, when they, 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 they focus on like Peggy's face and they make him look really tiny and her really big, it's very awkward. But other than that, a lot of people can relate. Like Steve Rogers is the everyday man. He is the underdog. He's this scrawny man who has no business being in a fight, but yet he is the man who always wants to be the first in line to like fight somebody and stuff. It's that heart, that bravery, that courageous spirit that made people love this character because this character could have like, you know, crashed and burnt like the older Captain America movie when they had like a frisbee, a balloon frisbee for like his shield. Like, you know, it could have crashed and burned like that movie. But thankfully, the writing was smart. And, you know, it really teaches people. It doesn't matter what you look like, how big your muscles are, how skinny you are, how short you are, that you can be a hero too. And you don't need a serum. Of course, he had the serum later on, but he was the hero before he had that serum. He just didn't have the strength, but he had the integrity and the courage and stuff and the willpower. And, you know, and I love how that one doctor dude saw the potential in him because he didn't want some arrogant person who's already built with muscles and stuff because that power would have corrupted him. He needed somebody who was pure of heart and pure of mind. And that is Steve Rogers and stuff. And so, of course, when he became Captain America, that dude was ripped. <laughs> <laughs> like he like i never seen chris evans that buff before and so because you know he's always had muscles but never like that and stuff that's that marvel treatment right there and so you know and then it was kind of weird in the middle of the movie because then he became captain america um because of his, the, the dude who um played by tommy lee jones he didn't want nothing to do with him and neither did the military and stuff he was just like a poster boy for like selling merch and like, you know, trying to get other people enlisted. And then that's the part of the movie that never made no sense. Why create a super soldier to take on the bad guys if you're not going to use him? That was always like really off and just peculiar and stuff. And I didn't like that part of the movie. But thankfully, you know, when his best friend Bucky um, was in danger and stuff, and nobody was going to get him because they were just going to make it a casualty of war and stuff. He was not going to let his best friend die, man. And, you know, he just like snuck onto the battlefield and he whooped some behind and stuff. And then people saw when he rescued all those people, they saw, oh, wait, we do have some potential in him. We have a super soldier. So then they started using him and everything. And it really tipped the scale in the war. And, you know, no matter how big or bad or how powerful, like, the bad guys were, he was always there with his shield, willing to like fight. And Chris Evans, like I said before, did an amazing job. And his sacrifice at the end of the movie was so heartfelt. It reminded me of that Ultimate Avengers animated movie with um, Captain America when he, instead of Peggy, he was saying like he, you know, he was monologuing in his head about Gail. I think Richards. I think her name is. She was his fiance in the Ultimate comic books. And maybe the classic. I know in the ultimate for sure. They didn't have her in this movie. They instead they went with Peggy. And you know, they were supposed to go on that first date and they never got that chance because he saw the bigger threat at hand and he had to put his personal life like aside. He's a virgin and everything, which I think Tiger with TT retconned that and the saying that he got laid on one of those like tours and everything, which I don't buy. <laughs> All right. I don't buy. <laughs> and, you know, he had to stop the bad dude, you know, and he had to get the Tesseract and he drowned and froze to death and was resurrected in the modern day. And that deleted, like, well, that wasn't so much deleted, but in credit scene where he's freaking out, waking up, and he sees that New York has changed a lot. And in comes Nick Fury. Now, 
Tommy Lee Jones, man, that dude can act. He always can act. It's sad that he's problematic on screen, that he's difficult to work with. In so many movies that he's been in, he has that reputation. But I don't understand why he's the way he is, because he's such a great actor. Like, you really felt that he was, you know, a commanding officer in the military and stuff. And, you know, Haley Atwell, like, I'm so glad they introduced her in the MCU because I didn't know who she was before then. And she is a great addition. She is a great, strong woman with integrity and tenacity. And they gave her her own series after this. Sadly, it only lasted for two seasons. And it came out in the freaking summer, of all things. The first season is amazing. I've talked about that. Go find that video. The second one has some hiccups and stuff. Hugo, we Hugo, I can't talk. Hugo, <laughs> Hugo Weaving, of course, that dude can add man from the freaking Matrix movie and Lord of the Rings. That dude is phenomenal and stuff. But it sucks that he didn't have a good time filming this movie to the point where he never came back. And then that dude who plays Aaron in The Walking Dead took over as the Red Skull. And, you know, I was really curious to know how they was going to do the Red Skull. I think they took inspiration from the Ultimate comic books. Around this time, they was taking, well, the, the first phase of the MCU was all about the Ultimate comic books and stuff. Even Steve's suit is based off of that. And his suit looks amazing. And, of course, Josh Whedon messed it up in the Avengers movie and stuff. Thank God for the Russo brothers, man. I'm telling you. So, anyway... Like, um, so yeah, that sucks. He never came back as Red Skull. I wish they could have had more Red Skull. I wish they could have had him being a little bit more menacing, but he was good, like, nevertheless. I kind of wish they would have had the Shintari in this, similar to the Ultimate Comics, because the Shintari help out the um, bad guys, and then it leads to the Avengers movie. That would have been the perfect thing, but they didn't want to go that far. They wanted to keep it simple and contained, and I understand that, you know? And, you know, there isn't much more you can really say that's so great about this movie. And then, of course, we all know the aftermath of what all happened. He's a man displaced at a time. Everybody he's known and loved is either dead or dying. Um, Peggy, his one true love, is so old she doesn't even really remember him. And then she dies in later movies. Bucky gets turned evil and stuff. And is an agent of Hydra. To where he he's just so bent on like rescuing Bucky in the other movies and stuff. Then comes the big alien threat, which he was not able to stop. He was unable to stop Thanos. And then, of course, you know, at the end of Endgame, boy, one man against an entire army. He did not care. Broken shield and all. And then, of course, you know, when he had to place all the like Infinity Stones back in their own timeline he stopped being a soldier and he started being a man when he saw peggy in the 1950s or 60s or whatever he could not help himself he decided to stay in the past and live out his life with his one true love altering the timeline and, cr and creating an alternate reality and stuff and then, of course, passing his shield in the mantle of Captain America to Sam Wilson, the Falcon. But now there is that disturbing nature of knowing he kissed his, um, what is it, great niece or whatever in the second Captain America. No, 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 on um, the third Captain America movie. Because he stayed with Peggy the whole time and nobody knew that in the past. And, of course, they had kids together and... Ugh, he kissed his relative, man. But he didn't know that. <laughs> but the Russos knew that, so why in the world would they incorporate that? <laughs> Alrighty, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.